And if you know it was the blood that saved you, let me hear you praise the Lord. Let me hear you praise him again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name right now, Jesus. We exalt you. We lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify your great name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. None to be compared to you, Lord. Hallelujah. At your name, demons tremble, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Your word is Jesus. Your word is Jesus. Your word is Jesus. Hallelujah. Just greet the person next to you. Just greet them. Hallelujah. Tell them something good about Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. The devil don't want this enough. Hallelujah, when we come together and we talk about Jesus and we worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I want to invite us to lift our faith tonight. I want to invite us to lift our faith tonight. Hallelujah, because we're not going to worship in vain tonight. Somebody has to pray through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody must take on his name in baptism tonight. Somebody must repent of their sins tonight. Hallelujah, we lift our faith to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we're going to lift, lift him up in worship. He said, if I be lifted up, then I will draw. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands one more time. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, give us a sweet spirit of worship. I feel like they're goose pimples right now. Let me call it Holy Ghost pimples. Hallelujah. This song says, just want to sing, sing another song. You know, you've been standing for a while, but let us sing another song. It says there's a great meeting on the other side. You know, I want to tell folks, you're here tonight and you're unsaved, that Jesus is coming again. He came, hallelujah, the first time. And he died that you might have life and have life more abundantly. But if you fail to take him up and his offer to you, then next time you're going to know him as a judge. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. So there's a great meeting on the other side. I don't know why it is that you, you want to live a life that is so hard and, and, and rough right now. And then eternity is even worse. But tonight you can receive deliverance. Tonight you can leave here a changed individual. Hallelujah. There is a great meeting. There is a great meeting on the other side.
Jesus. You may be seated. And while you're seated, just continue to worship God. You know, I was talking to a young man the other day. Hallelujah. They don't consider, they said that they are going to meetings. And when they go to their meetings, they just sit down and listen to the music or they will sing. But they don't lift their hands. And I'm saying, how is it that you can go somewhere to worship God and don't lift your hands? They don't shout hallelujah. Jesus. They go to a business meeting, man. But when we come to worship God and God begin to move, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I heard the songwriter say, touch me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Put your hand on me, I don't mind. Jesus. When Jesus begin to move, man, you have to lift. Hallelujah. And if you don't want to lift, you have to run. You have to dance some of the time. Hallelujah. This is the type of meeting I want to invite them to. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Just lift your hands one more time. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I remember when I just got saved, you know. It's when I just got saved. I didn't believe that. You know, I just think that I could go to any place called church. So I went to this place on the wall, Tom. And when, I, when they start singing and I want to stand up and lift my hands in it, so when I look around me, everybody, they just stand up and their hands in the pocket. And I said, no, sir, this can't work. <laughs> eh? Hallelujah. But God is so good. You know, I wouldn't trade him for anything. I wouldn't trade him for anything at all. He's just so good. He's just so lovely. You know, get nicer and nicer every day. Jesus. Hallelujah. I want somebody tonight to know this type of God that I'm talking about. His name is Jesus. And I want somebody tonight to know him. For whom to know is to have life eternal. Pastor Daly, I want you to give the report, sir. Just come and greet our visitors and saints alike and just give the report. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, can we praise the Lord, everybody? Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Are you excited tonight? Are you excited in the Lord? You, you, you're not here in the days, so you don't even know what is happening. You only know what's happening under the tent in the night. But some things are happening in the days also. You, you need to understand that we have folks here carrying out Bible studies every single day. Monday to Friday, sorry, Monday to Friday, 12.30 for one session. And then again in the evening at about 6. And that continues every day except Saturday and Sunday. Now the folks that are here in the days get to encounter some folks, some individuals who we only get a chance to hear about sometimes. Just today, only today, a gentleman came by. He walked all the way from Tivoli Gardens and he came to the tent. And he did not want to speak to anybody else except pastor, one of the pastors. During the Tivoli excursion with the police, his wife got shot. Tonight, she's unable to move around and he can hardly leave her. Very sad. But with all the folks and the churches and the groups around, this gentleman really have never moved out to seek help. Except that he was in his house in Tivoli Gardens. And he heard the mic 
the, the horn. He heard the sound of singing. He heard the preaching of the word. We are here at Bumper Hall. He lives in Tivoli Garden and he heard a joyful sound. And this morning he walked all the way from Tivoli Gardens and he came here and he said, I need help. Brother King spoke to him and we expect him back tonight. I don't know if he's here, but if that man is here, help is in the house. I hope he's here. Because if he's here, we're going to ask him later on to come talk to us. Because we have a word from heaven for him. Help is in the house. Something is happening in the tent tonight. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? Oh, praise God. It's not over yet. One man was driving in the bus. Coming from, what's that now? Up coming from up the road on his way downtown. Peter, I hope you are here because I found out what your name is. And Peter was on his way downtown because he had an appointment with three Obia men today. Three men, three different men because he had a, has a vexing situation. And today he was to meet three different Obia men and he was in the bus. And he said something moved him to look over here on his way down. And he said, one stop driver. One stop driver. He said the tent was different. There was something about over here. He stepped off the bus, didn't pay, not even the conductor. And the conductor never made no fuss with him. Him just a one-stop driver. Step off the bus. Come over to the tent and say, let me talk to somebody. The Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power. Jesus is in this tent. I pray that Peter is here tonight, Pastor Wong. Because we need to minister to him. He doesn't need to go to the Obia man. His journey stops right here. Whatever the Obia man can tell him. Is limited but Jesus can tell him all things that ever he did and there is deliverance in this house tonight oh praise God oh praise the Lord oh praise the Lord oh praise the Lord for he is good and his mercy is endure forever oh praise God praise God and if that's not enough Twelve precious souls have been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Seven precious souls have been reclaimed to the fold. Five have been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am glad that we came to Bumper Hall. I am glad that we made a sacrifice. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Visitors to this tent, you're in a good place. Whatever your needs are, Jesus is in this tent. God bless you. Saints of the Most High God, let's continue to worship him. To lift Jesus higher and watch and see what he's going to do. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tell you, you know, we don't serve any puny puny. Simple, simple. Tweeny weeny. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I've asked four persons to testify. And I'm going to invite them to come a little bit closer. To 
song says, Jesus is my deliverer. How do you know that he delivers? Hallelujah. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus, come sister, testify. Hallelujah, can we bless the Lord? God is so awesome, he is so great. He take a great God to save me. Because if you didn't know me before I get saved, I'm just here to testify to someone tonight. Because probably you are out there and you are wondering, you are so lost in sin, you don't know where to turn. Let I share my story with you before I get saved, before I get saved, before I get invited to come to church. I was on my way going mobby and let me be honest with you, to do prostitutes. And let me tell you, I introduced the church and I come. And when I come, my mind was changed. Let me tell you tonight, if you're searching and you don't know where to turn, come under the tent. Because Jesus is under the tent. Let me tell you, you're probably somewhere, you're probably putting on your clothes tonight to go to the clubs. You know the nightclubs, them. Change your mind. Come, come to here. Probably you're out there and you don't know to read. I tell you to come. I'm a living testimony. Jesus will teach you to read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. You're probably looking at me now. And you say, what you talking about? I was nothing like this. If you didn't know me, I was a Jezebel. I was nothing like this. Sometimes I even pinch myself because I said it don't real. But let me tell you, saints of God, it is real. It is real. I never know, I never dream that my hair could look like this, that I could have on a tongue skirt tonight. Every Monday night, I usually go to stall of wedding, wedding, you name it, and I'm Monday. But thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, come under the tent. Jesus is in the tent. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, it is really a privilege to worship God. And trust me, serving God really pays. And its benefits are enormous. Trust me, the salary is great. And I must tell you that I have never received a dime from any of my pastors to worship God. And trust me, it's really, really nice. I must tell you that when mother and father forsake you, Jesus Christ will take you up. I remember at age 15, you know, my mother tell me that, you know, I can't fend for you anymore because I have my other brothers and sisters to take care of. Believe me, it's the first time I ever have a headache. And God really worked it out. You know, I work and send myself to high school. And at age 19, you know, I rent my first house in Patrick City. And trust me, 
that the time I get saved and God really work it out for me. And believe me, I have my little help and everything. I have to give God thanks. You know, today I must tell you that I am a living witness that Jesus Christ really saved and he really keep you. And it, I trust me, really sanctify. And the other day, you know, it's a joke. I tell my wife, I went to a funeral and I saw this lady who I look up to, somebody from the upper class, you know. And I went to her and I quit. I said, hi, hey, auntie, how you do? And she was there talking to me and she looked from me to me too and she said, well, you look good, do You know, this is really the Lord's doing. You know, I have so many things I could tell you about Jesus Christ, but time won't permit me. So I want to say to the auntie, come and tease. Come and tease. I don't even have to tell you to see. You will see for yourself. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How do you know that he delivers? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord one more time. You know that, you know, I think it's Tuesday. My brother said, you know, that God is under the tent. You know, God is really under the tent. You know, God is really under the tent. You know, from week, you know, I, you know, I've been asking my question, you know, I've been talking to myself and I said, you know, you know, what if someone asks me, who is God? You know, what I'm going to say and where is God, what I'm going to say, you know. And I just there sitting down with myself and I said, if they come and said, who is God? The only thing I can say, God is a spirit, you know. And where is God? God is everywhere. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. You know, God is everywhere. And we are here and we are talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. But I want to tell this community say that the man and the animal is not Jesus. We don't praise the man and the animal. We don't bow down to the man and the animal. You know that I don't even have those calendar in my house. I don't even have that calendar in my house. You know that God is a spirit. No man never see God face yet. No man never see God face yet. You understand? No man never see God face yet. My brother talk about Jews and I about peace. Listen, I searched for peace. I was hungry for peace. I was desperate for peace. I looked everywhere for peace. I couldn't find peace from no one, nowhere. But I met Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus invited himself to me. Listen, I know how it feels for somebody to put a gun in your head and start to squeeze the trigger. I know the pain of gunshot. I know the suffering of gunshot. I know it feels to go days without food. I remember one time I got days without food when I did get something to eat. I couldn't eat it. It tastes like poison. Poison. I couldn't eat it. I know about hungry. I don't have to search for food anymore. I don't have to dig for food anymore because I serve a provider. I serve a provider. I serve King Jesus. Listen, come. Listen, you're wondering, and I said, listen, man, I cannot come, man, because there's somebody watching out for me, watching out to take my life. Listen, if you come, make up your mind to serve God. Listen, God will protect you. Listen, man, listen, man, I, sir, I know this community run. Even if you don't want to do anything, there is somebody coming to draw you out of your house. Say, listen, man, the road work is going on. Come, go on the road work. And himself not going because he don't want anybody to shoot him down. But he's coming for you and said, yes, listen, man, go. Go and bring the money to me. I know this community. I know the extortion is in this community. Listen, man, you don't have to fear them. Just come to God, Bridget. Come to God. And when they see you coming, man, they're going to say, brother, brother Zeke, brother you, Brother John, listen, man, they're going to praise you. They're going to lift you up, man. Just come out to God. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm here to talk to an unsafe person who is going to the Obiaman, Pastor Daly. I remember growing up in Walton Park Road. We lived in a shop with one bed, and my mother had nine of us. Hallelujah. And Christ was introduced to me before all those kids and my mother. I remember one day, my mother was so broke, my stepfather 
couldn't find money because we live in a shop. And those in the community, you might be sleeping on one bed without a mattress. I can testify to that. I used to sleep on a bed without a mattress. But listen, my mattress is this high from the ground. Now, praise be to God. Let me tell you something. My mother, she decided that she wanted to go to the Obia man, sir. And I was a saint. And I said, Lord God, do not make sure. And she did went. And the Obia man tell her to bring her sheep in the house. And Lord God Almighty, the sheep mess up all the place. Everywhere I got me, I felt something will get mad now and say, listen, this sheep have to go. God will provide. And God did. God saved her from going to the Obia man. God save her. Oh. How do you know he delivers? I know. How do you know he delivers? Wonderful God, you know. Hallelujah. You think the man can deliver you? Hallelujah. You think the man that you're running behind can deliver you? Come on. Jesus is my deliverer. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I just feel like, come on, lift your hands and worship. Jesus. Man. Somebody said, my, 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 Lord is sweet. My Lord is sweet, my Lord is sweet, my Lord is Jesus. Hallelujah. When you get in service like this, you know, you just want to go on and on. You know, I, you know, I remember, I got school long here, you know. When I was going to school, Brother Richard was still teaching. But I was over the trade section. And I played basketball for the school. And when I am supposed to be at school, I leave with my friend and go a place near Mary's mouth. Who are you past St. Mary? Tell me I go look girl, you know. Cause you have a girlfriend up there. So I, I want a girl too. I go up there with him. When it reached three o'clock in the afternoon then, a driver come and him say, boy, this is the last ride I go down there, you know. I'm supposed to be at school, you know. You can imagine I'm going to Mary's mouth. The driver said, this is the last ride. Going down. And my friend said, no, man. I said, boy, I might as well move off because I'm not getting a girl either. So I tell you, we hold off and we get ready from 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, we couldn't get anything. 5 o'clock, we couldn't get anything. So till we see a man with a lot of come and say, I'm going down. And when he reach a certain place in the dark, he come out with a flashlight and say, fierce. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, still never get no girl, you know. Because I go back home, but I don't get no girl. And I said, Lord, look how far I leave from and come. I'm supposed to be at school. Eh? Supposed to be at school, and I'm going to wear St. Mary. And the Lord, we come down, we couldn't get any bus when we reach a junction there, so. And we see a truck come and we flag down the truck. The truck has been like a little tractor, and we climb over at night. And we reach a down Robin, and I said, Lord, never again. I've been in situations where people say, boy, listen, I want to give you a gun to lock your hands. I'm going to say, yes, man. I want a gun, but not now. I'm coming back for it later. I'll know later can I come. 
Hallelujah. I could have been involved in many things, but the God that I serve, he was just pulling at my heart from a young age. I did many things, but he was just pulling at my heart. And I surrender to him, and he's one of the best things I ever did. Brother Carlton, I invite the choir to minister at this time in Jesus' name. Can we just lift our hands and worship King Jesus? Lord, you're worthy to be praised. The song that we've been ministering tonight, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My unsaved friends, we're going to minister this song to you tonight. And listen, you have betrayed Jesus. You have to come to him. Just worship as he ministers. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Let me just invite everyone right now to just stand to your feet. And just lift your hands just one more time and give the King of King glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for saving us, Lord. We thank you for your love towards us, Jesus. And without any further ado, I invite to come and minister to us tonight, Brother Andrew Martin and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right now and begin to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He is the great conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Oh God, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bible to St. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Akosha. Hallelujah. If you found it, say amen. Let us read together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Pastor Daly. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. We recognize that you are in the house right now. Hallelujah. We pray that you will have your own way, even at this time, mighty God. Minister to the needs of men and women. Those that need to know of your love, minister by your spirit. It. Let your hand rest heavily upon your servant right now. Touch his lips. Take a coal from off the altars on high. Place it upon his lips. Let fire come from his mouth right now. And let the words reach the heart of men and women. And that transformation will come. Oh, hallelujah. Have your own way. Move by your spirit. And let your perfect will be accomplished in the house right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray and we count it done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It may be seated. Praise God. We are all familiar with the word called love. Amen. We have all experienced what love is like. Amen. Amen. Somehow, Everywhere we look, we find that men are looking, they are looking for love. Hallelujah. They are searching for that thing that will fill the gap. Hallelujah. That is in their soul. Hallelujah. Many persons, they have turned to the girls thinking that that will have filled that gap in their souls. Many persons turn to marijuana. Hallelujah. Alcohol, money, friends, and a lot of things they look to thinking that this thing would fill that gap in their hearts. But we recognize that even though these things bring some form of pleasure, hallelujah, they seem to not fill that emotional cavity that exists in the souls of men. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
There's a deep cry within our souls for something that is bigger. Hallelujah. And that is why men will do whatever it is to find love. Hallelujah. The love that comes from men is a great experience. True. But there is some problem that exists when it comes down to the love that men have. Hallelujah. The first thing is that men's love tends to change. Hallelujah. As circumstances change. And that is why the divorce rate is so high. Hallelujah. Because husbands and wives, after a while, they fall out of love. Hallelujah. So what men call love is somewhat choosy. And it's periodic. Hallelujah. And it's temporary. And it's conditional. Men will love you because you are rich. Hallelujah. They will love you simply because you are popular. Hallelujah. Some persons, they gravitate towards persons because of how they look. Hallelujah. And it tells you something about the human love. It is conditional. Hallelujah. But the Bible describes a love. Hallelujah. Which goes beyond that of human understanding. Hallelujah. What theologian described love? Hallelujah. At excellency. Hallelujah. I love that surpass everybody else. It's equal, but it goes beyond everybody else's love. Hallelujah. Others might lay down their lives for their friends. But the love of God, he laid down his life for his enemies. Because while we were enemies of the cross. Ha. Hallelujah. Christ died for us. Tonight, I want to tell somebody that God loves you. Hallelujah. The measuring stick that we will use to demonstrate God's love, hallelujah, is not based on any circumstance. Hallelujah. Because God does not love you because of who you are. God loves you because God is love. Hallelujah. And if you want to use a measuring stick to demonstrate the love of God, then what we have to do is look to Calvary. Tonight, I want to paint a picture in somebody's mind that they might understand the measure, the length, and the width, the height, and the depth of the love of God. Oh, how he loves me. Hallelujah. 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 You need to understand that God wanted to demonstrate his love for you. So when men sin, you were supposed to die. But God came down and he paid the price. I want you to understand that the first thing they did, and Jesus was demonstrating his love, is that he took whippings for you. The Romans who whipped him, they were never novices when he come out to whip him. Their whips had hooks and it had metal actually in the whip itself. So every time they apply the whip to his back, what would have happened is that the hooks would itch in the skin of the back. And every time they pull back that whip, it would draw the skin. What are you telling me? After
saw about a few weapons. All the skin on the back would have been gone. But they didn't stop. They continued to apply the whip. Asha. And it wouldn't bypass, and it pass the skin, and it goes to the muscles. And it would rip it to shreds. And after a while, the blood would ooze from his back. This is the excellency of the love of God. It is said that after the Romans finished beating persons, many would have died. But Jesus didn't die at that point. Hallelujah. So, they gave him a cross to carry. The cross weighed up about 80 to 100 pounds. Now think about a man who was beaten in the back. And he had to be bearing the cross. No wonder if he fell because his hands were together. He probably would have fell on his chest. Hallelujah. Oh, how he loves you. To the point where a man had to take the cross and carry it for him. Now you thought that would have been all. But they placed a thorn on his forehead. Now this is not the normal maca tree that you see. These thorns, they were about an inch long. Inch to two inches long. It is said that the scalp has most of the blood vessels up here. Very sensitive area. What they would have done, they would have pushed it in his skull. So the blood was spilled from his back. He was struggling from carrying the cross. And now he was bleeding from the head. Hard shot. Matthew 27, verse 29 to 30 says, And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee upon before him. And they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him. And they took the reed and they smote him in the head. Excellency of God's love. No, someone would have thought that would have been it. But they placed him on the cross. And they used some nails that were about seven inches long. And they would pierce the hand. Not the hand middle, as the person would have it. But they pierced between the wrist. Because they ensured that he had to stay on the cross. Now while you're piercing the wrist, every single nerve ending, hallelujah, would have been destroyed. Or it would have been pinched, sending excruciating pain. Hallelujah. And they pierced the feet. Now you'd have thought the piercing would have been the worst pain. But with every breath, he was feeling pain. Every time he inhaled, he had to push up himself. When you inhale, your chest cavity goes up. What would have happened is that the foot would have been teared because he's breathing. And when he exhaled, he would have teared the hands even more. So with every inhale and with every exhale, he was feeling pain either in the hand how you was feeling pain in the feet? We're talking about the love of God. Now this is love expressed. And when it was not bad enough, a soldier took a spear and they pierced the side. Now can I tell you, this should have been you. And out of his side, blood would have flown and water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now we have the Savior, the Lamb of God, according to John 1 29, suspended on the cross between heaven and earth to take your place. And he cried, I thirst. Having gone through all that, you probably thought they would have given him water. But they took a sponge and they put it in vinegar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friends, I want you to understand that even though they placed Christ on the cross, and even though he was suspended there, no nail could have kept him on the cross. He could have called 10,000 angels and would have been done right away. He was God manifested in the flesh. Any word he had spoken at that point in time would have come to pass. But what held him to the cross was his unconditional love for you. Because he knew that if he didn't die on the cross, you would have died. 1 John 3, 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. The prophet Isaiah cried, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastity of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. His love was so great that he was willing to take your place. There is no love that is greater than the love of God. There's no water that can drown his love. There's no hurricane that can blow away his love. There's no earthquake that can shake it. That there's no circumstance that will make it change his mind towards you. He loved you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Closing. Paul writes it to the church in Romans. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 7 to 8. He said, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet pray adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The truth is his judgment says you must die. Because you're a sinner and you have committed sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. If you are ungodly, your only punishment is really death. But his love says, I will pay the price. Listen to me. Psalms 103, and I'm closing, verse 10 to 12. The Bible said, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those that fear him. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. With every blood that is shed on Calvary's cross, he shed it that you might have life. 
I believe the whole Bible hangs upon the scripture, St. John 3, 16. Because for God, so long, you can't measure so. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now here's the part. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. It means then, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, how shall you escape if you neglect so great a salvation that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Tonight, God has given you one more chance. God has demonstrated his love to you one more time. God has showed you the measure of his love. Most of us would never have gone through that. We could not even endure the whipping. But he did it that you might have life. Why don't you come tonight and set it right with Jesus? Set it right with him. God richly bless you. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord has spoken tonight. Let me just invite us to stand just one more time. Hallelujah. You are here tonight, and you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I just want to open, declare these altars open tonight, and I want to invite you to come. We are not going to force you tonight. But we are inviting you to come. If you want us to pray for you, come. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, come. If you want somebody to talk to, just come. Hallelujah. He has given you one more opportunity. You have heard the word of the Lord. And you are thinking, boy, I have tomorrow night. You're not sure about tomorrow. I'm inviting you to come. Sister Marsha, the song says, think about his love. Think about his goodness. For as high as the heavens above. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that brought to come forward. Just lay your hands on somebody and pray for them. Just stand around and worship. I want to make a final appeal. You are here and you are unsaved. You have not yet repented of your sins. You have not yet been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. You have not yet been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I am inviting you to come. Do not 
on the prodding of the Lord right now. The Lord is speaking to your heart and he's saying, just take that step to come up. I'm inviting you to come. I'm inviting you to come. I'm inviting the saints to come. Come on, come and get around these that are seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But you're here and you're unsafe. A final appeal, final appeal. Please, please, I'm begging you, come. Or as I. Or as I as above. So great is the measure of our Father's love. So great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about His love. Think about.
gentlemen, may I have your attention? I want to introduce to you in this corner of the good and the right stand the champion role 
Salvation was a thing that money could buy. The rich would have it and the poor would die. It's so
Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, the Lord. Reporting victory. Amen. Two precious souls have already prayed through to the baptism bless of the God, Holy Ghost. Bless God, bless God, bless God. And they say one more coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry.
land. 